Hi there guys and welcome to my very first tutorial. In this tutorial we will be drawing this Pokemon scene. This is a realistic-ish version of Venonat and a Pokeball. Um, I think I might split up this the video into two parts just because I think it might be a bit long for a single video. So after you after you've installed GIMP, you can just check the version. The version I'm using is version 2.8.16, which you can see from the help menu about GIMP, and it should show the version there. Uh, you don't necessarily need the 0.16 version, but at least 2.8, I think, just to be sure that you have all the filters that we will be applying. Right, so to start off we'll go to File, New, and then we will change the width to 3840 by 2160. Expand the advanced options and change it to 300 pixels per inch for both the X and Y resolution and say OK. We have a, we'll start out with a, a blank background layer and then we'll just, just create a new transparency layer of the same dimensions. Right, so to start off we're going to make the background layer a bit darker. I like to set it to a bluish grey color. So we'll just fill in that background layer. Just be sure to have the background layer selected when you do the fill. And then we can start drawing our Pokeball. So select the transparent layer and we can start off by drawing a circle. So to draw the circle you'll see that you can drag it um, in an oval shape but if you want the height and the width to be the same you hold down the, com the shift key and the, the height and the width should stay the same. So we'll drag the circle about 800 by 800 like so and then we will select a very light pink color to fill in that circle right then we will say select and shrink we will shrink the selection of that layer by 20 pixels and we're going to copy that control C we're going to make a new layer above that one and paste that layer. After you've pasted the layer, we are going to scale it. So select the scale tool. We're going to scale it down from the top about 50 pixels. So, it's seven, so it started out at 760 height and we're going to lower it to 710 height. So we say scale. Then we're going to fill the shape with a bright red color. So way in the corner, bright red, and fill in the shape, bright red. We're going to make, okay, you can anchor this layer. At the moment, it's still a floating layer. So when you select the movement tool, you'll see a little anchor next to the cursor, which you can click. Otherwise, you can just right click on the floating layer and say anchor layer. Alright, we're going to make a new layer, so just click file, uh, right click on, on the existing layer and say new layer. Again, transparency. Then we're going to select that red shape with the fuzzy select tool. And then select the red circle, then go select, shrink. And we're going to shrink that down by 10. After we've shrunk that down by 10, we're going to fill it with a radial gradient. Alright, so select your primary color as a dark red and your secondary color as a kind of a pink color. I'm going to select the blend tool. We're going to change it to 
the shape we're going to change to radial and then in the top left quadrant we're going to click and drag down to the furthest end at the bottom right now you'll see that that is the wrong uh, direction so it starts out with dark and ends up with light we don't want that so we can just control Z to undo and you can change that by either clicking on the reverse button here or swapping the colors so we'll just click on reverse do the same thing just click in the top left quadrant and drag it down so you'll have this kind of ball like shading this layer should actually be on layer number two over there so what we can do is just say undo Control Z. First, select the red circle. Then say select shrink by 10. Go to the top layer. Click on the gradient tool and drag that in. So it's on its own layer. Then we're going to select the pink layer with the fuzzy select tool. And we're going to select this layer but we still have the selection set to the bottom layer and we have filter blur Gaussian blur and we're going to change that to 40 and press tab it should be vertical and horizontal blur press ok so it will give you this nice looking red halo type effect All right then after that we we'll just make a transparent layer way at the top and then we're going to change it the mode to multiply and we're going to select our airbrush tool change the size to 300 so just click on the fuzzy select tool click in the gray area if you click in the gray area you have selected the gray area but we want to have the opposite so we can go control I to invert the selection so we can select the inside the circle or you can just go to select invert once you have that click on the airbrush tool just make sure you're on the multiply layer with the size of 300 and then we're just going to draw a shape at the bottom so we'll start not all the way in the center but just to the left of the center and then just drag your mouse all the way up to about there so it's that basically that half of the circle and then we're going to select a purple color like that so a kind of pinkish tint at the top merge down the multiply layer so you only have so the, the gradient and the multiply are now one layer then select filter blur Gaussian blur leave it on 40 and then press ok we don't have that line anymore now we're gonna make a sunspot so click on right click on the layer and say new layer then we're gonna select a very light yellow color click on the airbrush tool change it to the size of 50 and then just make a little dot there you can hold down either your mouse or your pen depending on if you're using a pen or a mouse then we're going to change the size to 100 and just do it again on that spot change it to 200 again on the spot for a little bit and then last to 300 click on the spot now you'll see, if you zoom in a bit, it's making these weird circles, which we don't want. But since it's on its own layer, we're just going to go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, but we're going to change that down to 20, and hit OK, and now the line should be gone. Now we're just going to merge down all these layers. So it should still be on its own layer above the background layer. If at any time you make a mistake, you press Ctrl 
Z to undo. So next we're going to make select the ellipse select tool and we're going to draw a circle slightly bigger than our pokeball. And then at the bottom just drag drag it up about a quarter of the way so you have this weird elliptical shape and we're going to s press ctrl i to invert the selection so we're actually selecting this bottom half of the circle so right click say new layer and we are going to paste that all right so your selection sh should look like this if we hide the top layer you'll see we have the bottom half and we can just anchor that layer and now we're going to go to color and select colorize and we're going to change the hue to 30 change the saturation to 10 and change the lightness to 65 now we're going to create a new layer again select the white part of the pokeball and we're going to do draw another circle the same way we did the first time slightly bigger than the pokeball and we are going to drag it up just below the white and red line there copy that go to our new layer and paste it so you'll have this smiley effect so if I turn off the white now you'll see that we've got a little stripe running through there so we can anchor this new layer by just clicking or just say right click on the floating layer and anchoring it then we're going to say color colorize and for this colorize we'll be changing the saturation to zero and the lightness to minus 70 Right, so now we've got our stripe running on its own layer. Now we're going to create a new layer again. And we're going to create a oval of 180 by 210. Like so. Go down to your black stripe layer. And just click on the eyedropper tool and select the dark grey colour. Then go back to your top layer and just fill in a little circle black. If it doesn't work, just check that your selection is not inverted and you're not um, trying to color the outside. In which case, just press Ctrl I or just say select invert. Alright, so while we're still on this layer, we are going to rotate it, so click on the rotate tool, select your circle and then we're going to rotate it by minus 50. doesn't have to be exact minus 50 but close enough should be fine. And then we're going to move the circle all the way down to just before the sunspot. So you'll see there's a as you drag it there's a little plus sign and you can more or less move it just to just in front of the sunspot and drop it down there and then we can just anchor our layer now once you've moved the circle you might have noticed that the selection has left a little outline which we don't want so we can just use our fuzzy select tool select the circle press ctrl i to invert the selection and press delete and that will delete everything outside of that circle on that layer then say select shrink and we are going to shrink it down by 20 so after you've shrunk down 
we're going to say we're going to make a new layer then you're going to make select a gradient select a dark gray and a light gray change it the shape to linear click on the top and drag it all the way down to the bottom so the light side should be on the top and the dark side at the bottom then we're going to say select shrink by 20 again we're going to make a new layer again when you've got the eyedropper tool you can s check this checkbox that says sample merged and that will select anything underneath the eyedropper tool or the color picker tool so you can select the dark gray and then fill in the shape with dark gray and then select the bottom circle the one with the gradient in it so we can just select outside of the gradient and press ctrl i to select it because if you select inside of the gradient it will select parts of the gradient so you click on outside so it selects everything except the circle and press ctrl i to select the circle then we're going to cut and paste click on the move tool and move it down so that we have a, a thin so it's a bit offset from the center and anchor that layer then do the same for the top for the darker spot select it because it's a single color and it's not a gradient you can just click on it cut paste with control x and control v then click on the shape and move it so that it's more or less also a bit of an offset anchor it first then select the shape say select shrink and now we're going to shrink it down only by five then we're going to color that back we'll change the gradient back again to a radial gradient and we will select not all the way from the top but just a bit down and we will select it to the furthest end to create a round sphere like shading and there we go so now you almost we're almost done with the pokeball so starting from the top we'll merge down all the way so that the line is on its own layer then we can adjust the color of the entire line so we'll go to colors levels and we'll make it slightly darker with a middle slider and bring out the highlights with the last slider and you can adjust this until it's more or less dark you want a dark line but you want a shiny surface on the button and press ok then the white layer you can select the white layer and then merge that down so that pokeball just the color part is on its own layer and then we'll do that do the same for that we'll just say color and then levels and then adjust the levels of the pokeball to what you want it to be and press ok merge down the line and there we have our pokeball on the first layer in our next part we will be drawing Venonat in a realistic style